I am A1C Grayson Vivada. I work at the HARM office and I deal with flight record folders. I manage flight pay, basically just personnel for pilots and flyers. I am Staff Sergeant Jake Udell from the 100 Security Forces Squadron. I work in the training section and I run our squadron's weapons and tactics program. I'm Captain Rachel Bates. I'm the 100th OSS Aircrew Flight Equipment Officer. After tech school, I arrived at RAF Melbourne Hall. I met a couple people, but I was still lonely. I was missing family. I was missing out on holidays at home. I was ocean away. And then a few months later, I had gotten into a relationship, probably earlier than I expected, but I did meet somebody and we started traveling together and, you know, getting to know each other more. So my wife and I were married January 2015. June 2015, I left for what was supposed to be a one-year remote assignment. That assignment ended up being just shy of a year and a half. So after that assignment, we PCS'd here to RAF Mildenhall. So my first duty station was McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita, Kansas, uh, flying the KC-135 out there for three years. And then we rolled over here beginning of November of 2016. And right at the beginning of 2017, I can only have what I can describe as the human equivalent of the blue screen of death. Uh, goals had been realized, we finally made it overseas, uh, equality was on the up and up, and I think I breathed for the first time in a really long time, and all that stress just kind of came out. As soon as I started to get to know him more, six, seven, eight months, I just wasn't feeling myself. I felt like I was changed as a person. I wasn't as happy as I was. I wasn't as social as I was. I was being more of an introvert than an extrovert, and that's just not who I was, so I figured out that I was definitely a whole different person than when I started the relationship. And his attitude and his mental, I don't know the word, but he basically made me think complete opposite of myself. I was sad most of the time, I didn't have the energy, and then as time went on, 9, 10, 11, 12 months, I was just in a darker spot. So I was working nights while she was maintaining her daily day-to-day -day schedule so we didn't get to see a lot of each other throughout, throughout the days. And on top of that, I had a lot of TDYs thrown in, and our marriage, kind of, our marriage started to fall apart. So I had the stress of my marriage, um, we had, and then I started making some bad decisions, ended up getting, going through an NJP process. And while I was going through the NJP process, I lost several family members. I lost a grandmother, a grandfather, an aunt and an uncle, um, who I was very close with. They weren't immediate family members, but when I was younger, they were pivotal in raising me and babysitting me and things like that. But since dealing with the NJP process, I was unable to make their funerals, so I had, that going on, the NJP, and you know my, the stressors of my marriage. So for me, it was finances, relationship, and a big overseas move. Uh, it was the single longest period of time my wife and I had spent together. Um, so that gave us more interaction than I'd had before. And I noticed and picked up on things that maybe weren't so healthy. Uh, finances, it's just expensive to move overseas. And then moving overseas, you're in a brand new country trying to figure everything out. I basically woke up and I was like, okay, if this is how he really is, this is how this relationship's going, and this is how he's treating me, I need to wake up because this is not who I am and this is not healthy for me. So I eventually got seen at uh, mental health and nothing was wrong with me, but at the same time I still wanted to get help because mentally I was not okay, especially if I wasn't eating right, if I wasn't sleeping right, if I was not focused on my work. Um, so I eventually got help and then I've basically just been keep going to these appointments and every time it just boosts my level of maturity 
it, I've become who I, like, I realized who I was before when I entered the relationship. So now I'm finding myself again. And I started having a lot of bad thoughts. I, mean, I can remember times driving home and thinking just about yanking the steering wheel of my car and going into a tree and one because no one would miss me. So I started seeing a lot of these, having these thoughts and seeing a lot of red flags. So I took a knee. I went to my first sergeant and said, hey, first sergeant, here's what's going on. Uh, I need to get over to mental health and, and talk to somebody. Relationship was not going well. The household in the evening was quite tumultuous. And I initially tried to look for help uh, under the radar, outside agencies, maybe out of pocket, because I really was very aware of the mental health stigma that it still exists. And particularly for rated individuals, I was like, oh no, I don't need them taking my wings away. So let's try to handle this on the down low and move on. Uh, so while I was trying to pursue that help that way, uh, kept flying, kept doing the flight simulators, and one of the simulators I just made a lot of silly mistakes that I normally wouldn't make. And so I took a step back and I realized uh, I'm not handling this well, getting the outside help isn't enough, and I need to take a pause from, from the ops tempo and, and address my issues. So mental health has helped me a lot, um, especially with them figuring out like what was going on in my head. And then it also helps me figure out like more things about the past and what I was going through. And I'm like, wow, I was completely different. That's just not who I am as a person. So it really helped. So he brought me over to mental health, got me into a counseling program, did one session a week for three months, started talking through my issues, my thoughts, what was driving these thoughts, and being and start talking about the stressors within my within my life and working through them. So from there, graduated out of the program, went back, went back to work and um, was able to not be as burdened by all my stress. So um, like I said, my leadership took good care of me, even with everything going on. They got me the help I needed, got me into the program. I was able to um, and work through the issues and ultimately save my marriage too while I was at it. So once I let my commander know, uh, I was very well received. Um, no hard feelings, no judgment, just just love. I think he even like looked at me and was like, mm, not much of a hugger, but if you need a hug, I'll give you one. Do you want anybody to bring you over to the hospital right now? What's going on? So all those things you're supposed to do were done. And it was, it was very good and it was very encouraging. And I think for about a year and a half total, I had talked to a nice lady twice a week over at the mental health office. Uh, my wife and I engaged in couples counseling through the family advocacy program. I went to some of the lunch seminars for like anger management and stress management and all that stuff. And uh, ultimately got prescribed an antidepressant just to help me deal chemically with everything. Um, and I'd say I definitely came out better on the other side of all this. If you think that you need help, then reach out for it. Because no one else can do it but you. Take the knee, get the help. Uh, there, there's a lot of resources out there. You have mental health, you have chaplains, you have resiliency trainers. You can even come talk to me and I'll, I'll listen to you. Um, I'm not afraid to talk, talk to you about what I went through. So ultimately, everybody goes through something at one time or are currently going through something. So if I can just get through to one person, I'll consider that a huge success. I think the one message would be, I had a moment where I realized my life was more important than my wings. I'd rather have a future and maybe not be a pilot versus die a pilot. So getting that help ultimately was the best choice for me as an individual.